I think the term bad boy is always commonly associated and elicited to describe men with practical negativity and men with undesirable character traits. There is always this nagging wave of criticisms from people that a bad boy mentality must be strictly avoided at all costs because it always leads you down the path taken astray by convicted scoundrels, street fighters, drug addicts and sexual assaulters. However, if you gentlemen can look across the stereotypical portrayal and dive deeper within the practicality of the character, the bad boy is not always a vividly stern representational term strictly and stereotypically reserved only for men who wear leather jackets, being covered with a thousand scars or tattoos on their faces, riding motorbikes, and smoking ten cigarettes in between their lips. It's actually a term that can be objectively utilized to represent powerful masculine characteristics such as Number 1. Men who knows what they want and goes after them The word selfish is also always commonly associated as a negative trait. In this softened up world, we're always told to be selfless and prioritize other people before ourselves. Give more to people more than ourselves. Here, yeah, right, you colossal halfwit. If we have nothing to offer in the first place, what sort of valuable favors we can do for others besides being both a hindrance and an embarrassment? If we have no muscles, how can we help an old lady with her heavy groceries? If we have no mechanical skills, how can we help others fix their flat tires and jammed up generators? If you can't make money, how can you even pay for a lady's dinner on a date and provide for her or your family for that matter in the future? We have to build and accumulate lots of value first in order to become legitimately capable and resourceful to help others and be selfless. And this can only be achieved by truly and vividly knowing what you want, relentlessly prioritizing your needs first before others, and most importantly, act continuously on them. Being selfish is an integral part of human nature. To neglect that means you are doing yourself and eventually others a disservice. Selfish men wins because they do not waste time trying so hard to appear credible and capable when they are not yet credible and capable. They solely prioritize in becoming credible and capable first before they assist others with their accumulated and well-oiled competence. Every decision you make must come from your point of view first. Offending a lot of people along the way is normal service for our soul, especially when it comes to making something significant out of ourselves. This is why you're identified as the bad boy, because you won't have enough time and effort to properly entertain everyone, because people are innately short-sighted towards most imminent circumstance and can rarely ever see the bigger picture. Number 2. Men who doesn't ask for permission for anything I think this is something I haven't or really discussed properly on this channel. Why would any full-grown man be completely subservient towards other people's opinions or judgments towards his values, interests, and lifestyles, when those people themselves do not experience the exact same sensation nor do they undertake the exact same responsibility as him? As gentlemen, we know the rewards and consequences of our choices, and through our acknowledgement of them and our covenant towards all necessary accountabilities, we commit to our choices with passion and ravishment. The desperate need for outside validation is bred from a severe lack of both effective moral support from one's own circle and practice of self-assurance in one's own autonomy. If you gentlemen like to play guitar or being in a band, don't let that go all because your friends told you to drop it because you're not around them as much anymore. If you gentlemen like to read books or novels, do not concede your profound interest on them because you've been called a nerd by some woman on a date. If you gentlemen like tattoos, do not give up on getting them because your family insists in not getting them and said that you look like a cheap Yakuza ripoff if you do. Defend your autonomy with persistent grace, resolute enthusiasm, or humor and an air of unmitigated aristocracy. And some of them may change their perspectives about you even if it takes quite some time. Our refusal to please or concede to their insistence which will lead to the fulfillment of their own ego investments towards a circumstantial perspective is the reason why we get classified as the bad boy in this case. Number 3. Men who are curious and adventurous As we should be. After all, we men are creatures of conquests. However, again, in today's age, we are constantly being induced to abide by the rules or conditionings with the purpose to tame and domesticate us through Netflix, video games, and social medias, creating the indoor generations of men who refuse to explore the world around them and familiarize themselves with the practical outside elements in order to constantly adapt towards reality. Timid, fragile, and fearful, we instead prefer to sedate ourselves through comfortable makeshift conquests in video games and fantastical or idealistic constructive circumstances or universes in movies. Taking risks is a necessary and crucial component for growth within an individual, and it has never been more mandatory for men to relish them than today. Mentally speaking, nothing is more anxiety-inducing and yet excitement-generating than taking a big risk, a huge chance of failure and an equally huge chance of success. Regardless of what they are, a vague gamble of hope or a systematically objective plan, 
Either way, they are opportunities for massive growth in all aspects that we essentially need. Especially for those of us that are currently lost in finding some form of purpose. Of course, it doesn't have to be always big in scale. All that matters is the sense of novelty that we can relish in. There is a song by Johnny Cash called Folsom Prison Blues, and in one part of that song, there is a lyric that said, Obviously, our loved ones will always want to keep us safe and sound, tucked comfortably in bed and away from the swords and shields or the cowboy boots and chaps kept in the barn. But if we're brutally honest, we all just want a good scrap and pike for at least one good day of the week. Because without it, life would eventually be habitually boring, mate. Our tendency to rebel, being carefree, and take more risks as men, sometimes unnecessary ones that could get us in a lot more trouble than we need to, is probably the sole reason why our life expectancy is much lower than that of women. But hey, that's why women love us for it. Number 4. Men who are unapologetically their own imperfect character We all have inadvertently tried to become or at the very least visualize ourselves becoming the ideal man. A perfect individual with no flaws and discrepancies that never miss or trip a single step. But in reality, we all subconsciously know that this doesn't exist. We all have our own set of flaws and because of this social media age where we only glorify and pedestalize the highlights of our bright side of the coin since we are all so fearful of criticism and judgments, it leaves behind a massive gaping hole or at least an unnoticeable grey area full of ignorance and lack of acknowledgement or fascination towards our own individual inherent imperfections. Now, when it comes to character flaws in this case, I'm talking about ethical and moral character flaws, not unethical and immoral character flaws. I mean, if you're an emotional wreck of a man who laid hands on his own mother, then of course you should apologize for your appalling conduct and do your absolute best to fix them. Ethical and moral character flaws are usually traits that are either hereditary and or inborn like the unfamiliar shape of your nose, your unorthodox hair pattern, your inherent inability to multitask properly, your occasional technical clumsiness, your persistent stubbornness, and perhaps your disinclination towards extreme romantic gestures. Understand that nothing and no one is perfect, and that being perfect is bland because within perfection there is no X factor, nothing to fascinate about because all areas have been touched. The idea of achieving perfection and working towards or close to perfection is alluring, but like everything that every human being has conquered, whether it is physically or metaphorically, it will eventually become meaningless and unappreciable. Embrace all of these flaws and stop trying to desperately fix them because they together make up a huge part of you and they are what makes you intriguing. And yes again, some people will hate you for them and some may even want you dead because of them because other people have different preferences and tastes that needs to be satiated and you happen to be the one that couldn't do such a thing for them and you shouldn't try to. But that's how life should be and how life actually is. Not everyone is meant to get along in one big place and sing kumbaya together. But don't ever apologize for being distinct and bespoke and if people keep coming at you to try to get you to do such a thing, do yourself a favor, flip the bird on them and tell them to go smoke their own schlong. And finally, number 5. Men with ruthless self-respect I don't think I need to explain this any further than necessary to you gentlemen anymore. Being able to say no, walk away, stand up for yourself and call someone out for their inconsiderate behaviors is an indication of ultimate self-respect. You're not here to be utilized as a doormat, a punching bag or a scapegoat. People nowadays are used to getting things going well for themselves through taking advantage of others and bullying their way into relevancy without ever being stopped on their tracks and put in their places for their increasingly egotistical and borderline neurotic misconducts. Most of the time, you always have to be the one to make them go on the defensive and give them a taste of their own medicine because they'll keep doing them if you don't. And yes, we often get identified as an asshole for hurting their feelings through calling them out. But hey, who gives a rat's ass about what they feel? Whatever it is, objectively know who you're going to let in and who you're going to cast out. It will help make or break your well-being. Never ever drown yourself in self-pity from having to lose an individual in your circle because let's be brutally honest here, people don't mean that much when everything is harmonious and convenient. The truth is, all of us men have this bad boy mentality inside of us and if we're being brutally honest, we all wish we could embody them without so much hesitancy. And you could if you just stopped trying so hard to win everyone's vote. However, there is a catch or a thing to be considered when it comes to practically utilizing this mentality. As the way reputation plays a very important role nowadays, we have to be a lot more considerate in showcasing who we really are. 
lot of the times we have to wear a mask and play a role first before we slowly unravel our true character. But again, different circumstance calls for a different approach, and so you have to assess the situation firsthand before you make your move. Thank you for watching.